I bought this old K10 behind me. Uh, it's an 83. It was sold to me as a barn find and I, I kind of picked it up sight unseen. So I trailered it home and I found out pretty quick that the charging system is, well, non-existent. Uh, the wires were just a mess. So uh, as you can see, uh, the best way I can describe it is butchered. ghetto billy anyway years ago these old trucks you could count on the wiring systems in these to be pretty well intact but these days they've had 17 owners six engines 14 radios three sets of exterior running lights cbs 23 batteries the wiring's been electrical taped, with screw capped, duct taped, scotch taped, hot glued, and then the coons and the squirrels and the chickens get to it. So I'm gonna simplify things. Come on back. You know, five, six, seven engine fires later, sometimes there's not a whole lot left to work with under the hood of these old trucks. So I could put a new wiring harness on these and make them like brand new. That's not what this video is about. What I'm trying to do is simplify things, show you how to get what you got back up and running and on the road. Or if you're doing a boat or uh, you know an old tractor, have a working, easy to manage charging system. So this is a three wire, very common GM alternator. 63 amp these the externally uh, the internally regulated alternators were made by gm between well from the late 60s through the mid 80s and then there were some externally regulated alternators started out i think in 1963 and these were on gmc's chevy's pontiac oldsmobile buick uh 12 volt systems they were all basically the same very just a bread and butter uh, alternator that was easy to work well still is easy to work on so I'm going to start by showing you the three major uh, the three main components uh, an AC Delco I think it's a 10 SI 63 amp bread and butter alternator mid 80s starter off of a 350 Chevy motor and a 12 volt battery all right so I'm going to spin this around and we'll start Right here, uh, you'll see a two spade connector into the side of the alternator. And on the back, you'll see number one, and you'll see the number two. And, well, I'll get to that in a minute. Over here, you have the battery output post, which it will say battery right there. And then over here is a uh, ground hookup. So <clears throat> the plug, on the top of the alternator has a two spade connection, which this is the factory right here. And you may or may not still have this on your vehicle. And it plugs in just like that. So <clears throat> number one right here is keyed power. And it's also known as an exciter or a trigger wire. 12 volts, I'm gonna plug this in just to give you a little idea here. The factory wire on the GM alternators for your uh, exciter wire or your trigger wire is normally blue. And this will go uh, to a junction block normally or not. <clears throat> From there, it will go into the ignition switch where it normally turns to, I believe, brown. Anyway, 12 volts goes through this wire and uh, into the alternator to complete the circuit and this initiates the charging process. And this is a 12 volt power on. Now this wire or this circuit can be run to most anything that's keyed power, meaning it's on when the key is on. That initiates this circuit, that closes the circuit. <clears throat> that's when you see your dash light come on. Once voltage is being generated from the alternator, this, this circuit will be interrupted. And that's when your dash light goes out. 
Uh, some people will actually run, uh, you can run a diode in this circuit so that you've only got uh, voltage going one way and it doesn't backfeed, which to me isn't really normally a big deal. Uh, some people will run a 194 socket here and they'll install um, a bulb. And so that you can see when the bulb is on, that's usually during the initial uh, starting of the engine. When it goes off, that's when this circuit is interrupted. And that means that the generator now has its signal and it is generating voltage to the system. The light will also come on if your voltage should drop. So for example, if your, your uh, alternator belt breaks, uh, the light's gonna come on. This wire should only be run to key power. Again, ignition on only. Um, if it's always hot, if you run this to something that's hot all the time, it's gonna run your battery down. If your distributor uses points, you can run the wire to the positive side of the ignition coil. There's been a problem, one of the problems with running this uh, to something that's hot all the time is that you may find out after you've got the engine running, you can't shut it off. And so you'd have to unplug this to shut your motor off. So that's why you only want to use keyed power. Um, okay, so over here, you've got your voltage sensing, sensing circuit. Now this wire reads the alternator's output so that the internal regulator can adjust as needed and do regulator things. Normally, this will connect also to a junction block. And in this case, for simplicity, I mean, if you've got a rat's nest of cobbled wires or they're all burned up, different colors that don't match your factory schematic, this wire can be run to the alternator's battery post directly, right here, okay? Now these two pins inside here lead to the internal regulator, and that's what regulates the alternator's output. Now this wire is 10 gauge. Um, and that's very important, and I'm going to get back to that later. You can tie an amp gauge into this if you want to. Um, so now we go down to the output post. Now this is 10, 10 gauge, okay? Um, this normally will run down to the main lug on your starter right here. However, if you don't want to climb under your truck or whatever reason, you can also Take this and I'll tie these both together now. But you can also take a 10 gauge wire and run it directly to the positive post on your battery. Just like that. And that is that is how it charges the battery. So voltage travels from the output post on the back of the alternator to the number two pin where voltage is regulated. Now, a few notes. I was saying before <clears throat> that these alternators were grounded to the block from the factory. Well, 40, 50 years have passed and engines have been replaced and they've been painted. There's grime, powder coating, whatever. So a lot of times you may not be getting a really good ground. So what you can do is take another ground and run it right here to the back of your alternator. Run that up or tighten this up. And then this just ground to your frame. And you'll have another ground. You can never have enough grounds on a, on a truck or a car, in my opinion. You just, you just need them. And the question has come up before, uh, will an alternator charge up a dead battery? Well, <clears throat> a junk battery, no. A dead junk battery, you can jump it here, drive into town and shut your car off, and it's probably not going to start. A, a battery that will hold a charge but is low, possibly. The problem arises though, is that when you do that, you jump a, a dead battery or a weak battery with jumper cables so that it's low 
you're probably going to hear a lot of noise coming from your alternator, buzzing, whirring, something like that. That's an indicator that your alternator is at 100% maximum output and it's working all it can. The problem with that is that these alternators aren't designed to work continuously. They're designed to maintain the charge in your battery. So when they're doing that, they're creating a whole lot of excessive heat and that can cause those alternators to fail prematurely. Um, that can also be hard on the battery and it will create more corrosion. And going back to what I was saying about heavy gauge wire, that's why 10 gauge wire is just mandatory when you're going from the alternator to the battery or to your starter. You've got to have that because that's where the electrical fires come from, from overloaded wiring that melts and ignites. I hope what I just told you made sense. I hope, <laughs> hope you can understand and get something out of this. If not, well, I took pictures and I drew pictures, so we'll make it a little more simplified. Power to the battery. Number two goes to the battery. Number one is your key on power. Auxiliary ground, anywhere on the frame. Battery output to your positive on your battery. Questions, comments, complaints, recipes, favorite songs, leave them below. Thanks folks, talk to you later.